But these young men that just were mentioned become fearless because of their faith in God. They have an anchor that holds. They're not afraid of this king. They're not afraid of the result of being where they are. And they don't even have the encouragement of their mom and dad or anybody else around them like that. They're all in the same mess and they're out of their, uh, their norm. They've been taken away from their society that they're used to and their surroundings. Yeah. And they've been placed under this king, but they have not forgotten about God. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and Daniel starts it out here in Daniel chapter 1 with a purpose in his heart. I want you to see first of all about Daniel that he, uh, he has this, uh, this purpose in his heart. He is a defiant one as a prince. Amen. See, if you get saved and you really want to serve God, you're going to have to have some defiance about you. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to step out there and take it. If you're a preacher especially, yeah. first thing you need to develop being a preacher is a rhinoceros hide. Because yeah. everybody's going to get after you, man. Right. You ain't going to please anybody or everybody all the time. Part of the people, some of the time. I mean, you, don't, you understand, you're just in a in a quandary. I had a lady the other night, I made a little old uh, story in a camp meeting, I made a little old joke, and that's all it was, just a little, just a little phrase, just, just a little deal I told about, and the whole place broke up. They liked it, had a point behind it, I mean, they got the point, except for one lady. I mean, probably what, 300, you think there, three or 400 in the place? After it's all over with, we're taking down the PA system, and I'm doing what I normally do, resting, <laughs> watching them take it down. That's my job. <laughs> I'm sitting there, and I'm exhausted because I just preached in this tent after another young man preached. And I was wore out. It was outside in the tent, and, and it was packed, and it was, I mean, uh, Bugs was around, and Nats was zeroing in. I found out what my nose, it's a, it's a gnat, it's a gnat magnet. That's what my nose is. Man, they just love me. And there I am fighting them gnats, sitting there sweating, wiping my face off, got my Bible beside me, and people coming by shaking hands with me. And I'm not on the front row. I'm back four or five rows, just sat down in, the, in one of them folding chairs, and here come this lady. I'm the best preacher she's about ever heard. She starts that way. You know trouble's coming. Huh? I, I mean, she blows up the balloon, boy, but she's fixing to stick it with a pen here just a minute. She said, I, I liked everything you said. She said, I just did not like that little remark you made there in that joke you told. Well, you, if you've heard me preach much, I say two or three jokes usually. In a message, I'll say two or three funny things. Anyway, some of them just come out. And then some are playing. This one, I, it just came out. I mean, I'd told it before, but it just came, I didn't have it written down and wasn't planning on saying it. But I told it, and it wasn't bad. It wasn't off color. It wasn't anything. It was just a little funny. And she didn't like it. But now do you understand what she had to crawl across to, to rebuke me? 60-year-old man, she's way younger than me. I'm a 60-year-old man. I'm her elder two ways. I'm her elder in age. Yeah. She should have shut her mouth. Yeah. I'm also her elder as being a preacher, a man of the gospel. Yeah. And she, I mean, she, she didn't know me from a load of coal. She didn't come to me with her husband. She never, you understand what I'm saying? She crawled over, I think, several obstacles yeah. just to get to smart off to me. And tell me how it was. You know what I said to her? I looked her right in the face. First thing I thought, my flesh said, just tell her to jump in the lake. You know, just go ahead and scold her real good. But the Holy Ghost got a hold of me quicker. And I didn't say that. I said, I'll take that under consideration and do exactly what I think I should. That's pretty good. That wasn't too bad. It hurt her, you know. But hey, Listen. Daniel is in a shape where everything in the whole town yeah. and in the whole system now has been turned upside down. And he's been brought into this element 
And until these surroundings that nothing is going to be good for him. I mean, there's just not anywhere he can look and get any kind of help from the place he's in. But he's still going to stand for God. He's still not going to back up because he's got a purpose in his heart. He's got, I mean, he's defiant about what's going on. And they, you see the setup. They're going to feed him a certain way. They're going to give him the wine, uh, the meat and the wine that the king, uh, he's going to have the best food and the best drink. It's going to be furnished to him in three years. They're going to do that. And then they're going to school him and train him. And they're going to, I mean, they're going to test him and see what he's got and place him in the kingdom according to what he picks up in them three years. They assign this eunuch to see that that's done. Daniel tells the eunuch, and God has given him favor yeah. with the eunuch. Yeah. See, God's, hey, God works in this thing. Yeah. If you'll stand for God, I promise you he'll stand for you. Yeah. He'll make a way for you. He'll set a table in the wilderness. I mean, he, he will fix you up. He's equipped you to go all the way to the city. No matter what harassment you face, no matter what haranguing you have to deal with, you can go all the way to the city by His grace. Amen. It's already a done deal. Amen. They got in the boat, put the disciples in the boat and told them to go to the other side. It was a done deal. There may be some wind. There may be a shaky boat. There may be a, may be a, a walk on the water. There may be some other things like that. But the, hey, the conclusion, they went to the other side. Amen. That's what we may have a little rocking around, may have a little wobbling around, may have some attacks to deal with. But we're going to the other side. Amen. Absolutely already determined. I, hey, you and I should be defiant in this day of departing. We ought to be defiant ones that will stand up and say, it doesn't matter what you say, we want you to go along with us, but whether you go or not, we're going. He was defiant. Told that eunuch, said, tell you what you do. I don't want the king's wine or meat. Yeah. I want you to give me pulse, give me vegetables, evidently a vegetarian. Yeah. He said, I don't want none of that meat. I don't want any of that stuff. I'm not going to defile my body with it. Yeah. Now, I don't mean you can't eat meat. Yeah. Don't, don't get into all that crazy stuff. Yeah. I like what Brother White said last night about yeah. the animals. Yeah. I like that pretty good. If you can't ride it, and eat it, it ain't no use having it. <laughs> Amen. That's pretty good. I'm going to remember that one. I, I liked Brother White last night. I, I haven't seen him in years, and uh, he was still up hard. He did a great job. L listen, when you get around the church house, you need to laugh every little bit you can. You hear me? Because you're going to have enough tears. You're going to have enough tears. You need to laugh every once in a while. In fact, it do some of you real good. It might threaten you a little bit. Some of you look pretty frowny. But if you it, you understand, if you really, if you just want to be lazy about it, it takes less muscles to smile than it does to frown. So let up a little. Don't, don't be putting so much weight in there. Defiant. It said, prove us ten days and come back and look at it. You'll be able to look at us and tell the difference. Hey, we ought to be able to look at you and tell the difference. Amen. You don't shouldn't look like the world. Amen. You shouldn't, hey, you shouldn't be identified with the world. Amen. Your speech shouldn't talk of the world. Hey, it's okay to talk about sports and other kind of things like that, but I'm telling you what primarily ought to be on your mind, supremely ought to be on your mind, in priority ought to be Jesus. Amen. Daniel had, had a purpose in his heart, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego also had that kind of determination. This is dealt with in in the second chapter here as well in Daniel's life and then in chapter 3 in the Hebrew children's life and then on over into chapter 6 where Daniel gets all of his promotion and all. But it starts out with a defiance. Yeah. Prove me and say. Boy, did God come through or what? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> Daniel had this purpose 
But you understand, he, I think he went out on a, on a limb.